Hello fellow guitar nuts. It's Steve, the OG. How y'all doing? Hopefully well. Um, I just got home from work, hence uh, still got on my monkey suit. But I thought, you know what? I've got a bit of downtime. Um, let's do episode uh, 15, which I think, am I right? 15? Sounds right. 15. Hopefully the uh, clickbait title drove some of you in. Um, this video will make you uncomfortable. What we're going to talk about is uh, going outside your comfort zone uh, for, uh, for profit and fun. Um, or uh, to make friends and influence people. I don't know. Uh, it's just stepping outside of your norm and the ways it can be rewarding for you. But uh, first, let's see what's going on. Um, I'm getting ready to go on vacation, so I'll be gone for uh, about five days. Um, for anyone who wonders, yes, indeed, I do have a, uh, an armed house sitter, so don't get any funny ideas. Um, speaking of funny ideas, um, I've gotten some more uh, messages from people saying, when are you going to do a guitar collection video? And um, I thought about putting up a poll, but uh, I don't know if I feel like dealing with all that, but uh, plus I'm not sure I know how, but I, I can figure it out. Um, I guess what I want to know is, would you guys be interested in, in an hour-long video showing all my stuff and me talking about it? Or... Would it be better to break it up into a couple of shorter segments where I just pick out a section of guitars and show you these? Would it be better if I um, had a guitar of the week and showed you one every episode for a year? I mean, which actually still wouldn't get it done, but something of that nature. What, what do you think, uh, you know, what would you like? Um, I just sat through, uh, what's the guy's name? Bainey. Bainey's uh, both his 2020 and 2021 guitar collection videos. And those were like 45 minutes each, um, and I enjoyed it. So maybe some of you were the same. I don't know. Give me your opinion. I want to know. Tell me below, um, are you even interested in seeing my stuff? And if so, in what format? How would you like to? Um, you know, I'm more than happy to show you what I have. Um, I'm not necessarily proud of it. I think I might have a bit of a problem, but uh, there are worse problems a man could have. Um, at least I can sell this stuff and, you know, come out okay. Um, speaking of which, <clears throat> I'm going to uh, talk about a little buy sell, buy sale trade, um, buy sell trade. Either way, um, that I've been going through lately, um, I've uh, made a couple of really interesting deals. Also, I have a couple of really interesting, I think, really interesting uh, guitar unboxing slash review videos coming up real soon here. Uh, strangely enough, two of them are both about guitars named after insects, flying insects to be exact, um, just completely by coincidence. Um, but anyway, to the meat and potatoes of the, uh, the uh, subject here today, stepping outside your comfort zone. What I'm talking about is, let's say you're, uh, you're a heavy metal guy, you're into high gain, um, you, you know, you shred and sweet pick and you do all that great stuff that uh, I'm totally incapable of any of. Uh, maybe if you're feeling stale, you should listen to some uh, some country music. Now, I'm not kidding. There's guys out there like Brent Mason that are absolutely monster guitar players. And listening to someone like Brent or, or you know what, there's all these free guitar lessons online. Take a couple of hot uh, country guitar lessons online for free. Or even pay for them if you're, you know, that, of that mind. But, uh, and see, I mean, I, you know, you could be surprised yourself some new techniques you pull in. I can only imagine, you know, what it might sound like to, to incorporate some of those country songs, uh, techniques and things. Hey, look at someone like John Five. The guy not only shreds, but he's also a monster country player. And he somehow pulls it all together and has a really unique and really cool style. By the way, John Five, uh, congratulate him. He's taken over from Mick Mars and Motley Crue. Um, our condolences to Mick Mars, whose ankle losing spiniosis, I think it's called. Um, it's a debilitating disease that's kind of taken him out. Uh, it's a shame. But uh, John Five got the gig, and that should make for a real interesting situation. Maybe it'll bring some new life into Motley Crue, which is otherwise, in my opinion, pretty stale. But anyway, yeah, try that sort of thing. Uh, listen to some country or, or look into some jazz. Um, likewise, if you're a country guy, is it going to hurt you to watch some shred videos? Uh, 
you know, I think it could be really interesting to hear a country song where you've got, you know, a solo with a bunch of sweep arpeggios and, um, you know, eight finger taps or something, something that no one's really done and incorporate that into that style. You know, all these things are valid. You know, in my opinion, and again, this is just my opinion, there are only two kinds of music, good and bad, and both of those are subjective. So in reality, there is no objectively good or bad music. There's just music. Um, you could argue, except for maybe Yoko Ono, which I think everybody universally thinks sucks. But, uh, you know, that's neither here nor there. So how does all this uh, outside the comfort zone slash box thinking, you know, what's that apply to me? Specifically in, in this episode that I wanted to talk about. Well, I've been bitten pretty heavily in the last two months by the baritone bug. By baritone, I mean both guitars that are tuned down a fourth or a fifth to B standard or A standard, or also bass six type guitars that are tuned a whole octave down, E to E. Um, I like them for different reasons, but uh, <clears throat> I'm very heavily into it. And uh, I went from having one instrument of that general family, my Squire bass six, to now somehow six weeks later having... Uh, well, to be honest, six of them, uh, two of which I'm going to be reviewing for you. And no, I didn't spend a bunch of money. I traded off a bunch of stuff, sold some things, and just basically moved things around, um, things I wasn't using anyway. But this baritone thing, the key is, is every time I pick one of these up, especially the B to B baritones or A to A baritones, that sort of thing, every time I pick one up, I feel like there's songs falling out of me. Now, I'm a songwriter by nature, but no exaggeration. In the last six weeks, I've come up with more song ideas than in the previous 11 months. And it's all because of these baritone guitars. I don't know what the deal is. The, the chords, the regular chord progressions I've always done have a completely different feel to them, a different sound. They imply different things in a baritone. And... Um, I can't recommend it highly enough, you know. Uh, there are baritones out there you can pick up really cheaply, especially used. Or if you want to get something nice, you can do that too, of course. But I think you might find the same as me. It really reinvigorated my songwriting and my playing. Now, the guitar in particular I'm going to talk about today, I've had three or four days, four days now. And that four days, because of that guitar, I've played more hours than I had in months combined. Um, I can't leave this guitar alone, and it's completely outside of my comfort zone, something I would never have thought to buy, nothing I ever thought I would want. Um, it's an Ibanez, let me show it to you. <clears throat> this is an Ibanez, 28 inch scale. The model, it's, it's actually, I know it's a little dark in here, but uh, I, I have a bit of a headache and I don't feel like turning lights on. This is called the RGIB-6. Now, there's a newer version called the RGIB-21 that does away with this kill switch and does a couple of other things, but it's essentially the same instrument. Now, I have this tune in standard A to A. Normally, I do B to B because I prefer it, but the strings on here are pretty big, and they were super tight. Uh, almost too, well, they were. They were too tight for my fingers. They, I was tearing my hands up uh, playing this, and it occurred to me, why don't I just tune it down to A? I'm not recording anything with it at the moment anyhow. It's, it's just going to feel better, and it does. But I, I, can't, I can't leave this guitar alone. And I would have walked by this in practically any music store in the world and not given it a second look. It's an Ibanez, Super Strat type of thing, pointy headstock. This is totally not me. I don't play metal. I don't even play particularly heavy music. If I'm picking up a baritone... You know, I'm, I'm writing 60s style pop, or at best, 70s hard rock, which is far from what you need something like, you know, an Ibanez shred guitar for. But I fell into this, and uh, well, what happened was this. Um, those of you that have been following the channel for a while will remember that I went to a, what I call a hoarder's guitar sale. Uh, some guy who had roughly four or five times as many guitars as I have, and I already have too many. The guy had hundreds. Uh, every room of his house, he died. <clears throat> and uh, his family had no idea what to do, so 
they hired a um, an estate sale company to come in, mark prices and everything, which they completely did haphazardly. I mean, there was no rhyme or reason to the pricing. Some things were grossly overpriced, some way underpriced, some completely, you know, incorrectly labeled. But regardless, while I was there, I picked a couple of things up. One of the things I picked up was uh, a now out of production Epiphone Explorer Goth Series guitar. Um, I don't have a picture of the particular guitar, but I will show you a picture of what the one looks like right here. Uh, I bought this guitar specifically to flip, although I did in fact string it up, set it up, and use it for a gig with my cover band Raygun, and it performed flawlessly. It's a great guitar, but it just wasn't something I particularly wanted. I paid $185 for this guitar, okay, which I knew was underpriced, but that's what they asked for. That's what I gave them. So I put that up on Facebook Marketplace for sale or trade, make a nice little profit. And some young guy, I call him a kid because he was in his early 20s and I'm 50, so he's a kid to me, got a hold of me and said, I desperately need that guitar. Will you trade me for my Schecter CR6? And I said, well, I'm not a Schecter guy. That's kind of a heavy metal sort of guitar. And He's like, just take a look at it. He goes, you'll like it. It's, it's, a, it's a really great guitar. And I said, well, I'll meet you. That's fine. So I met up with the kid, and sure enough, it was a fantastic Schecter. Uh, here's a picture of the actual guitar. Um, it played flawlessly. Uh, amazing fret work. Ridiculously low action. It was just wonderful. He gave me that guitar and a $100 bill for the Epiphone Explorer. I didn't push it. It was his idea. Fine. So if you're keeping track, I now have a Schecter that I've paid $85 for. Thing sells, or at least lists for $7.99 new. And uh, it, it, I'll tell you right now, it wasn't an overpriced guitar at $7.99. It was fantastic. But again, not me. Um, if I was looking for just a guitar to... You know, just specifically because I was going to play, didn't care about what it looked like or whatever else. Not that it wasn't beautiful, it had a great finish, but it just wasn't my style, if you understand. Uh, just like this isn't. Um, anyway, I took the Schecter home, hang on, hung on to it for a bit. I listed it on Facebook Marketplace, looking specifically to trade for a baritone guitar, because at the time I didn't have one yet. Um, in the interim, I bought one. Um, actually, I came across two, but regardless, it sat on there for a long time and I got all kinds of offers, none of which were for baritone guitars. No one, of course, offered me the cash that I would have wanted. And then finally, four nights ago, uh, a gentleman who goes by the Facebook name of Squirrely, I can say that because I, I, I don't think it much matters, got a hold of me and said, hey, brother, I've got a baritone, I'll trade you. He goes, it's an Ibanez RGIB6. So I looked it up and I went, oh, that doesn't look like me at all. But I watched a couple of videos on it. And uh, these are EMG active pickups, something else I don't really use. Um, everything on this thing is top notch. Locking tuners. Um, so I believe this is an EMG 60 and 81 set, if I remember correctly. Anyway, I watched some videos. And almost all of them were, of course, guys chugging with massive high gain and whatnot. But I found one video where someone played on it clean and I went, wow actually sounds really decent. Um, I thought, well, if nothing else, I could always trade the Schecter for this Ibanez, and if I don't like it, maybe I can trade it for a more suitable baritone to somebody else later. You know, maybe some kid bought an Eastwood or something of that nature that's more my style, and I can swap with them. You know, I mean, it's a multi-step process, possibly, right? So I met the guy, checked it out. Sure enough, it's pretty clean. Um, it, it seemed okay. I didn't look over it too much. We were outside meeting in a McDonald's in the rain. But uh, he took one look at my Schecter and said, done. Take it. I said, okay, fine. Brought this thing home. Sat down with it. And then played for 90 minutes. I haven't played for 90 minutes continuous in ages. I could not let this thing go. I couldn't believe it. The neck feels fantastic. The action. Everything on it. It's just... It's a perfect baritone guitar. I don't even care what it looks like at this point. Um, it felt phenomenal. And that's when it was still tuned to B. So the strings were super taut. 
before it occurred to me, you know what, I'll just drop it down a step so it feels a little more comfortable uh, in terms of string tension. But I immediately wrote a song on this thing. Um, and it's, again, something I would have walked by in any music store and not even taken off the wall. So what is the key there? Uh, you know, if, if, like I said, if you're into one style of music, listen to some other styles. Take a lesson in some other styles. If you're very much a guy who's going to, like me, gravitates toward a Rickenbacker hollow body or something, you got nothing to lose by pulling something like this off the wall and just seeing what you think. I mean, and not just baritone. I mean, you could find out that something like an Ibanez gem is a gem for you, something you've always wanted. And let's go the other direction. Let's say you're a guy that is shredtastic and you do the sweep arpeggios and eight finger tapping and everything else. You could find that something like this particular retro style checker, which I just played a gig with. I love this guitar. Um, this might be right up your alley. You never know. Uh, the ubiquitous Telecaster. I've yet to see any style of music that somebody can't seem to make work with a Telecaster one way or another. You just don't know. Try everything. You know, I mean, it's supposed to be fun. Make it fun. You know, climb every mountain, whatever. But make it fun. And, uh, you know, the sooner, now I'll grant you, I, this is easier for me to say at 50 than it would have been at 25. But the sooner, this is words of wisdom, the sooner you stop giving a damn about what anybody else thinks about what you like, you're going to be that much better off. Whether it be the style of music you're playing or learning, the style of guitar you pick up, whatever else, you're only going to be doing yourself a favor. Because let's be honest, they don't care what you think. Or if they do, it's just in a superficial way. So why care? Right? So anyhow, uh, bottom line on this just particular topic, if you haven't tried a baritone, do yourself a favor. Try a baritone. Um, you might just find that it's the thing that you need to spark your creativity, your playing, whatever else. Who knows? Um, I can't believe the difference it's made for me. Um, and, heck, I haven't even plugged them in yet for the most part. I've mostly just been playing them, you know, acoustically. Um, once I start putting on my pedals and everything, who knows when I'm going to find, you know, that much more you know, inspiration. So anyhow, that's all I really wanted to talk about. Um, we're like, uh, what are we, three three weeks away from the big holiday. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, you're in good shape, uh, you know, mentally, physically, maybe even financially, and uh, looking forward to a, a good holiday. If you're not, I hope you get your proverbial stuff together. And I uh, just want everybody to be happy. That seems like a radical concept for some people that so much you care about other people's happiness. But guess what? I kind of do. I find that it just kind of comes around. I don't buy much into things like karma, but it doesn't seem to me that it can in any way harm me for somebody else to do well. So uh, be well, eh? So till I talk to you next, which should be very soon because I've got a bunch of videos partially in the can. I just need to finish a few things and I'll be posting them. So until next time, stay cool, stay frosty, chime on, rock on, be good to yourself and others. Just have fun, man. That's what it's all about. All right. Till next time, Steve out.